Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the stereochemical outcomes of the Diels-Alder reaction, focusing first on the dienophile. In the previous video, uh, I introduced you to the idea that certain kinds of dienophiles, for example, those with electron withdrawing groups, I'm having trouble drawing one, like this uh, unsaturated aldehyde are actually much better dienophiles than just or, you know, plain hydrocarbon type alkenes. And as this reaction proceeds, whoops, then generates the, the product, the product still has that aldehyde on it. And so we have this, this structure. And if you're looking at one of these things, uh, now might be a good time to note that you're looking at the structure of a product that might have been made from a diels alder reaction, that the four carbons that contain the alkene in the cyclohexene come from the diene. And these are, you know, with the alkene in the middle. So these four carbons here, and then the other two carbon atoms in the ring and whatever's attached to them come from the dienophile. There'll be a video later on, uh, with some practice on how to identify how you might use a Diels-Alder reaction to synthesize a compound. Okay. Um, but you also note that this reaction includes a new chirality center. So the first thing that's worth noting that in this case, in this specific case, uh, we have A chiral reactants, which you may uh, be able to predict then that a chiral reactants have no predisposition for which configuration is going to occur, and the product forms as a racemic mixture. What gets interesting is when the dienophile has two substituents on it. In this particular case, the Diels-Alder reaction is stereospecific. Uh, the specific, uh, the specific stereochemistry of the diene trans, or sorry, the specific trans uh, stereochemistry of the dienophile translates into spe specific stereochemistry of the product. So this diene is cis, and that cis diene is going, that cis stereochemistry is going to be preserved in the structure of the product. And part of the reason that this happens is because that this is a concerted reaction. Up to this point, you've probably studied some other concerted reactions like the uh, SN2 reaction, the E2 reaction. Uh, some other addition reactions of alkenes uh, are concerted reactions. Everything happens at the same time, which means there's an opportunity for stereospecificity. Stereospecificity in all cases arises from when a reaction mechanism is concerted. Uh, and I'm actually just going to share with you that most organic chemists uh, don't like this kind of representation. They actually want to draw the aldehyde or the extra carbon atoms coming off in the plane. And they feel it looks a little bit clearer to actually draw in the hydrogen atoms and show that the hydrogen atoms are cis to each other. And because the hydrogen atoms are cis to each other, every, the other things at that position must be cis. What I'm going to, um, or I'm going to do, show you trans first, and then uh, I'm going to attempt to show you 
uh, the geometric requirement for the transition state. And if you remember from your studies of other concerted reactions, every concerted reaction has a geometric requirement in its transition state. And it's that geometric requirement in the transition state that leads to the stereospecificity. But first, let me just draw trans going to trans. Uh, and again, I'm actually going to use I'm going to put my the, the wedges in here for the hydrogen atoms to, to help show uh, the trans more clearly. And especially when you have uh, when you form bicyclic molecules, it's much much more common to show the uh, show the the stereochemistry on the hydrogen atoms. Okay, uh, and it's worth noting that this molecule is chiral, and so the enantiomer is formed. Uh, this molecule is not chiral. This is this is a meso compound. So so this is so we get a meso. We don't have a lot of room. Actually, I want to show one more example here. Uh, in the previous video on the scope of the, let's do a little, let's do a different one. On the previous video on the scope of the dienophile, I had mentioned that some dienophiles are cyclic. Here's a different cyclic dienophile than I used previously. Uh, because the cyclic dienophile is locked in a cis conformation around the, the double bond, then you preserve that cis orientation in the structure of the product. And you can see now that with one reaction and two relatively simple products, or two relatively simple reactants, we can generate a pretty complicated product. I'm actually gonna end this video here and we're gonna start another video where I describe the transition state of this reaction um, and, it, and its out impact on other stereochemical factors, uh, particularly stereochemistry related to the dynine uh, as well. And so you can see how everything just or it originates from this uh, common concerted uh, transition state. Thank you for watching.